Welcome to The Cube Insights, a podcast that is typically taken from SiliconANGLE Media's The Cube interviews, where we share the best of our team's insights from all the events we go to. And every, from time to time, we want to be able to extract some of our learnings when we're back at the ranch. Joining me uh, for this segment is co-founder, co-CEO, benevolent dictator uh, of a community, my boss, Dave Vellante. Hey, Dave, Stu. it's good to see you dressed down. Yeah, well, podcast, right? We got toys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Props and no tie. Yeah, I, I love seeing this. Uh, you know, we we're just talking. You know, John Furrier, who you know, we, we could really make a claim to say we wouldn't have the state of podcasting today, definitely in tech, if it wasn't for what John had done back in the day with PodTech. Um, and uh, you know, it's one of those things we've talked about podcasts for years, um, but I had gotten feedback from the community that said, "Wow, you guys have grown and go to so many shows." that we want to listen to you guys as to what was interesting at the show, what did you guys take out of it, what cool people did you interview, um, and we said, well, they're of course all over YouTube, our website, thecube.net, but it made a lot of sense to put them in podcast form because podcasts have had a great renaissance uh, over the last couple of years. Yeah, and it's pretty straightforward, as you know, Stu, for us to do this because virtually every show we do, even, even if it's a sponsored show, we do our own independent analysis up front, and at the tail end, a lot of our people in our community said, we listen to that to get the lay down, uh, the lowdown on the show, and get your you know unfiltered opinion, and so why not? Yeah, Dave, a great point. I, I love from from when I first came on board. You always said, Stu, speak your mind, say what the community, <laughs> you know, what are the users saying? What does everybody talk about? As I always say, if there's an elephant in the room, we want to put it on the table and take a bite out of it. And even yes, we get sponsored by the companies to be there. We're fully transparent as to who pays us. But from the first Cube event, at the end of the day or after keynote, we're going to tell you exactly what we think. And uh, you know, we're always welcome for debate, for people to come back, push on what we're saying, and uh, you know, help bring us more data. Because at the end of the day, <laughs> you know, you know, data and what's actually happened in the world will help shape our opinions and help us move in the direction where we think things should go. I think the other thing too is a lot of folks ask us to come in and talk to them about we, what we've learned over the past year, past six months. This is a great way to just hit the podcast and just go through, and this is what I do, I just go through some of the shows that I wasn't able to attend and see what the other hosts were saying. So how, how do you find these things? Yeah, so, so first of all, great. Uh, it's The Cube Insights is the branding we have on it. Uh, we're on iTunes, we're on Spotify, we're on Google Play. Uh, Buzzsprout's what we use to be able to get it out there. It's an RSS uh, on wikibon.com. Uh, I will embed them every once in a while or link to them. Uh, we plan to put them out. It, on average, it's, it's once a week. We have, want to have that regular cadence, typically on Thursday from a show that we've been at. Uh, the spring season's really busy, uh, so we, we've often been doing two a week at this point, but regular cadence, uh, just uh, podcasts are often a little tough to Google for, so if you go into your favorite player and look at the Cube Insights, and if you can't find it, just hit you, me, uh, somebody on the team up. So you just search the Cube Insights in one of those players. Yeah, so absolutely. I, I know uh, I've, I've been sitting with a lot of people, and you know, right now it's been word of mouth. This is the first time we're actually really explaining uh, what we're doing, uh, but the, the Cube, one word, Insights is the second word. Uh, I found it real quick in iTunes, I find it in Google Play, as I said, Spotify is great for that, and uh, or your favorite podcast player. Let us know if we're not there. So maybe talk about some of the things we're we're seeing. Yeah, last, absolutely. Last so so on. right when we're here, what are our key learnings? So um, last for the last year or two, Dave, I've really been helping to you know look at the companies that are in this space. How are they dealing with multi-cloud? And, and the refinement I've had in 2018 right now is that multi-cloud or hybrid cloud seems to be you know, where everyone's landing up. And part of it is that everything in IT is heterogeneous, um, but when I talk about a software company, really where is their strength? Are they, you know, an infrastructure company that really is trying to modernize what's happening in the data center? Are they born in the cloud and they're, they're helping there? Or are they really a software that can live in SaaS and private cloud and public cloud? I kind of picture a company and where's their center of gravity? Do they kind of you know, lean very heavily towards private cloud and they say, oh, that public cloud, it's too expensive and it's hard and you know, you're going to lose your job over it? Or are they somebody that, you know, in the public cloud saying, there's nothing that should live in the data center and you should be 100% public cloud and go adopt serverless and it's great. And the reality is, is that customers use a lot of these tools, lots of SaaS, <laughs> multiple public clouds for what they're doing, and absolutely there's stuff that's living in the data center and will continue for a long time. 
I mean, what do you see in Dave? My sort of takeaway in the last several months, uh, half a year, year, is we used to talk about cloud, big data, uh, mobile, and social as the four drivers. I, I feel like it's kind of been there, done that. Um, that's getting a little bit long in the tooth. And, and I think the, there's like the three Ds now. It's, it's digital, you know, digital transformation. It's data first is the sort of the second D and then disruption is the third D. And, and I think if, if you check out one of the podcasts we did on seeing digital with David Michella, I think he did a really good job of laying out how the industry is changing. There's a whole new set of words coming in. We're moving beyond that cloud, big data, social, mobile era into an era that's really defined by this matrix that he talks about. So check that out, I won't go into it in detail here, but at the top of that matrix is machine intelligence or what people call AI. And it's powering virtually everything and it's being embedded in all types of different applications and you, you clearly see that and to the extent that organizations are able to leverage the services, those digital services in that matrix, which are all about data, uh, they're driving change. So it's, it's digital transformation actually is real. Data first really means you got to put data at the core of your enterprise. And if you look at the top five companies in terms of market cap, the Googles, the Facebooks, the Amazons, the Microsofts, et cetera, those top five companies are really data first, you know, what people sometimes call data driven. And then disruption everywhere. Uh, one of my favorite disruption scenarios is of course crypto and blockchain. Of course I have my, my book, The Enigma War, which is all about uh, crypto, cryptography. And we're seeing just massive innovation going on as a result of both blockchain and crypto, crypto economics. So we've been really excited to cover, I think we've done like eight or nine shows this year on, on crypto and blockchain. Yeah, it, it, and it's an interesting one, Dave, because absolutely, when you mention cryptocurrency and Bitcoin, there's still a lot of people in the room that look at you, come on, that's the, the, those crazy folks and it's money and it's speculation and, and it's ridiculous. What does that have to do with technology? But you know, we've been covering for a couple of years now, uh, Hyperledger and some of these underlying pieces. Um, you and I both watched Silicon Valley and you know, I thought they actually did a really good job this year talking about you know, the new distributed internet and how we're going to build these things. And that's really underneath one of the things that these technologies are building towards. Well, the internet was originally conceived as this decentralized network, and while it physically is a decentralized network, it's owned, essentially controlled by a, an oligopoly of, of beh behemoths. Uh, and so, what I've learned about cryptocurrency is that internet was built on protocols that were funded by the government and university collaboration. Uh, so, for instance, SMTP, Gmail's built on SMTP, your old friend TCP IP, <laughs> uh, D DNS, et cetera, are all protocols that were funded essentially by the government. Linux itself came out of universities. Early developers didn't get paid for, 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 for developing the technologies there. And what happened after the big giants co-opted those protocols and basically now run the internet, development in those protocols stopped. Well, Bitcoin and uh, Ethereum and all these other protocols uh, that are being developed around tokens are driving innovation and building out a, really a new decentralized internet. So there's tons of innovation and funding going on that I think people overlook. The mainstream media talks all about you know, fraud and, and these ICOs that are BS, et cetera. And there's certainly a lot of that. It's the Wild West right now. But there's really a lot of high quality innovation going on. Hard to tell wh wh what's going to last and what's going to fizzle. But I, I guarantee there's some tech that's being developed that will stay the course. Yeah, I, I love if, uh, uh, I believe you've read the Nick Carr book, The Shallows, uh, Dave. He really talked about when we built the internet, there, there's two things. One is I could push information and that's easy, but building community and being able to share is really tough. I actually saw at an innovation conference I went to, the guy that created the pop-up ad, like comes and he apologizes greatly. He said, I did a horrible, horrible thing to the internet yeah, he did. because <laughs> I helped make it easier to have ads be how we monetize things. And the idea around the internet originally was, how do I do micropayments? How do I it really incent people to share? And, and that's one of the things we're looking at. Look, ad-based business models uh, have an inherent incentive for large organizations that are centralized to basically co-opt our data and do onerous things with them. And that's clearly what's happened. You know, users want to take back control of their data. And so you're seeing this, they call it a matrix or, you know, Silicon Valley, I think you're right, did a good job of sort of laying that out. The, the show is actually sometimes half amazingly accurate. <laughs> um, and so a lot of development going on there. Anywhere you see a, a centralized, you know, so-called trusted third party where they're a gatekeeper 
and they are adjudicating, essentially. That's where crypto and token ec economics is, is really attacking. It's, it's the confluence of software engineering, cryptography, and game theory. This is the other beautiful thing about crypto is that the, there's alignment of incentives between the investor, the entrepreneur, the, uh, the customer, and the broader community. And so right now everybody's winning, maybe it's a bubble, but usually when these bubbles burst, Something lives on. I got some beautiful tulips in my, my front yard. Yeah, so I, I, I love getting insight into the things that you've been thinking of. Uh, you know, John Furrier, the team, Peter Burris, our Hall Analyst team. Let's bring it back to the Cube for a second, Dave. We've done a ton of interviews. Uh, you know, I, I counted, I'm almost up to 200 interviews this year. We did 1,600 as a team last year. Uh, I'll, I'll mention two, because one, uh, I was absolutely giddy, and you helped me get this interview. Walter Isaacson at the Dell Show, uh, one of my favorite authors. I'm working through his uh, Da Vinci book right now, which is amazing. He talks about how humanities and technology, the marrying of that. Of course, a lot of people have read the Steve Jobs interview. I love the Einstein book that he did, The Innovators. Uh, but um, if you listen to the Michael Dell interview that I did and then the Walter Isaacson, I think he might be working on a biography of Michael Dell, which I've talked to a lot of people, and they're like, I'd love to read that. He's brilliant, amazing guy. I can't tell you how many people have stopped me and said, I listened to that Michael Dell interview. Um, the other one, customers. We love talking to the customers, especially you know people that they're, they're, they're chewing glass, they're breaking down new barriers. Uh, Keith Downs and I interviewed, uh, it was Vijay Luthra from Northern Trust. Uh, as Keith's a Chicago guy and he's like, this is one of the you know oldest and you know most conservative financial institutions out there. And they're actually going to be on the stage at DockerCon talking about containers. They're playing with serverless technology. How do financial institutions, you know, get involved in the data economy, you know, leverage this kind of environment while still, you know, maintaining security. So it was one that I, I, I really enjoyed. H how about what's, what's jumped out at you in all your Well, you know, it reminds me, so uh, the, the quote from Andreessen, software is eating the world. Well, data is eating software. So every company is, I mean, it reminds me of the NASDAQ <coughs> interview that I did recently. And all we talked about, we didn't talk about their IT. We talked about how they're pointing their technology to help other exchanges get launched around the world. And so it's a classic case of, of a procurer of technology now becoming a, a seller of technology. And you're seeing that everywhere. I think what's going to be interesting, Stu, is, is AI. I, I think that more AI is going to be bought than, than built by these companies, and that's how they, got, they, they will close the gap. I don't think the average, everyday Global 2000 company is going to be an AI innovator in terms of what they develop. I think how they apply it is where the innovation is going to be. Yeah, I, I mean, Dave, we had this discussion back when it was Hadoop. It was the, the practitioners that will leverage this will make a whole lot more money than the people that made it. Um, We've certainly seen that. Yeah, I, I, I saw, I said, like Linux became pervasive. It took Red Hat a long time to become a billion dollar company. Uh, you know, we're going to see OpenStack go, go a long way there. Uh, any final, final thoughts you want to go on, Dave? Well, so uh, yeah, check out thecube.net. Uh, check out you know the, the Cube Insights. Find that on your on your whatever your favorite podcast player is. Uh, we're going to be all over the place. So the Cube.net will tell you where we're going to be. Obviously, SiliconAngle.com, Wikibon.com for all the research. All right, and be sure to hit us up on Twitter if you have questions. He's Dave Vellante, D Vellante on Twitter. I'm just Stu S T U. Uh, Furrier is uh, at Furrier. Peter Burris is. P.L. Burris uh, on Twitter, our whole team, wikibon.com for the research, siliconangle.com for the news, and of course, thecube.net for all the video. Uh, and at the cube. And at the cube, of course, uh, for, uh, on, on Twitter for our main feed. Oh, and we're also up on Instagram now, so check out the cube signal, all one word, uh, give you a little bit of behind the scenes fun. Our, our phenomenal production team uh, helped to bring uh, the buzz and the energy for all the things we do. So. Uh, for Dave Vellante, I'm Stu Miniman. Thanks so much for listening to this special episode of the Cube Insights.